All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to our uh, Try Hack Me uh, classes. Uh, it's your boy Hank Hackerson. Uh, we are going through the. Uh, it's called Basic Computer Exploitation. Um, is the the name of the current module that we're on. It's four steps. So there's four different uh, individual um, uh, exploitation. Uh, rooms I guess so one of them is called vulnerability vulnerability university basically uh, basic pen testing Kenobi and steel mountain those are the four different rooms that we're gonna go through for our module for basic computer exploitation if you don't have access to try hack me you can definitely sign up for it it's very affordable and if you want a discount link there's a discount link in the description that makes it even more affordable affordable and uh, it's your boy Hank Ackerson. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, share. If you have any comments or questions, uh, definitely leave it in the comment section and make sure you turn on that bell so that you get notified the next time that we drop something. And uh, this is very short compared to the other rooms that we've done so far. So I feel like we're going to be able to do this room pretty quickly. And then from here, we might be able to do all the other three rooms also in one sitting, maybe one video. Uh, we'll see how long this one takes. If anything, I might just break it down to two videos to keep it short and sweet, but I think we'll be able to pull it off and put it all in one video. So uh, basically it says, you know, deploy the machine. So this is kind of a common theme with TriHack Me is that they give you a machine to attack, which is going to be the green machine. And then you get the attack box, which is what I clicked on right here that allows you to, uh, it's usually an Ubuntu Kali Linux attack box that you get to use that you will use, for, you'll go from here and you attack this machine right here, this IP address that they gave you. And so we already deployed it, so easy does it. So recon, uh, Nmap is a very good tool for reconnaissance. And if you haven't already used Nmap or haven't heard of Nmap, it's called an Nmap short for network mapper. And we're going to be scanning uh, the IP address that they gave us with the SV flag. And so it's a free tool, um, very powerful open source. It's kind of like the standard for doing any kind of reconnaissance uh, when you're running scans against an IP address. Um, these are some of the basic flags, but you can always, uh, let me see if I can just pull up my terminal just to kind of show you what it looks like on the terminal. Um, so this is our terminal. Let's clear the terminal. And if you do man for manual and you do nmap, oh, I reset this computer and I don't even have nmap installed on this computer. So we're not even going to be able to do it, but I'll do it on the attack box right here because the attack box already has it installed. So we could just do this man nmap, and it gives us all of the, uh, the stuff, basically all the instructions. And so uh, synopsis is man, or excuse me, basically this is how you run it, right? So it says nmap, whatever type of scan you want to run, any kind of additional options you want to add to it, and then the target, which is the IP address that you want to run or the domain name that you want to run against. And it really has, I mean, a lot of stuff on here that you can just read through. And these are the different versions of scans and everything that you could do. So there is this section for host discovery, scan techniques, port specification, what type of ports you want to scan, service version detection, uh, and scripts. So there's a lot of scripts that come inherent with Nmap and the scripts themselves could, uh, you know, scan for vulnerabilities or uh, different types of uh, tracing or and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you could do with Nmap when it comes down to reconnaissance. So that's kind of the tool that we're going to be using to do our recon. And uh, just kind of as a as a quick overview, the SV attempts to determine the version of the services that are running on the on the IP address dash P and then the number of the port. So when you do single dash in front of it, you have to actually say which port you want to scan. If you do dash P dash, it's going to scan all the ports. And if you do this, it's going to take a very, very long time. And then you have PN, so capital P lowercase n. It disables host discovery and scans for open ports. Then dash capital A enables OS and version detection, execute, executes inbuilt scripts for further enumeration. It's basically all. So when you do dash capital A, you're running for everything. Um, 
uh, dash s capital c is scanned with the default nmap scripts dash v for verbose if you do vv it makes it extra verbose and it basically prints everything onto the screen as the scan is happening uh, su is for udp port scan and ss is for a tcp sin port scan so it doesn't do a complete tcp handshake it just does a sin uh, packet it sends a sin out just to see if the port is open and it's usually better to do it this way instead of doing a full handshake scan because it the, the full handshake sets off you know sims or uh, intrusion detection systems and stuff like that so that's kind of it and so uh, there's a lot of stuff as well as the online stuff um, so scan the box how many ports are open so very basic let's run it and let's see how many ports are open is this our actual IP address it is our actual IP address. So here we go. So nmap sv1010, what is it? 136.69. So here we go. nmap sv1010 136.69. I think that's the port, right? 136.69, great. Okay, so this should take a quick minute. All right, there we go. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six ports open, and it actually gives us the service for that. Oh, 21 is FTP, 22 is SSH, 139 is NetBIOS SSN, 445 is also NetBIOS SSN, and it actually gives us the version as well because we, we did a SV scan. And these types of things are very important when you want to try to find exploits or vulnerabilities for these things. And 3128 is a proxy SQUID uh, HTTP proxy version, and then open HTTP, just a regular HTTP on Apache, and that's it. So these are the services that are running. So what is it? It was six. So the answer to our question right here is six. Cool. What version of the Squid proxy is running on the machine? Which is what we found right here. And we're going to copy that. That's our squid proxy. How many ports will nmap scan if the flag dash p dash 400 was used? It should run 400, right? There you go. Because it's, it's going to scan everything up to port 400. Uh, what is the most likely operating system this machine is running? So the most likely operating system, I want to say, uh, probably Ubuntu, I think. So let's see. I think it's Ubuntu. Yep. Uh, what port is the web server running on? The web server is running on uh, this one, Apache. 3333. I don't think it's asking for the proxy. I think it's asking. Yeah, there you go. So it's essential to ensure you're always doing your reconnaissance thoroughly before prog progressing, knowing all the port open services, which can all be points of exploitation is very important don't forget that ports on a higher range might be open so constantly scan ports after 1000 even if, even if you leave checking in the background okay very good what is the flag for enabling verbose mode during nmap which is v oh, and usually that's a, it's actually a good practice to do dash v just to kind of see everything as it happens but i didn't do it this time all right okay cool uh, locating directories using GoBuster, also a very, very powerful tool. It's kind of part of Recon, and it shows us different things about DNS and uh, servers and things like that. You can find directories, um, you can find files inside a website, and uh, it's typically word list based. So here we go, there you go. So the word list, is, if you use a word list, you can. Um, I think that it actually requires that you do run it. And uh, it's basically, um, it's, a, it's another free tool that comes with Kali Linux. You can download it if you want to, but if you use Try Hack Me and their attack box, it already comes pre-installed with it. So you just run it and the command is very simple. You just do go buster, dir, so you're running for directories. That's the dir command. And then the u is for URL, and then you gotta give it the actual URL. Uh, especially if we're going to be, you could do the port specified at, at the very end um, to because we're scanning the HTTP server that they have. So uh, you need to put HTTP in front of it because you're saying URL. Um, and then the word list that we're going to use 
to to find it. And Durbuster, uh, directory Buster is a part of uh, GoBuster, and then it has a word list associated with it. And this is already in the attack box, but uh, there's sec lists that you can get from GitHub and a bunch of different free word lists that are available that you can just find. So uh, dash E is print the full URL in your console. Uh, that's the flag that we're going to be using. Uh, dash U is the target URL. Dash W is the path to the word list. Dash U is to enumerate usernames and dash P is to enumerate passwords um, or to actually, excuse me, to uh, to assign a username and a password. Uh, I'm thinking about a different uh, tool. And then dash P is for the proxy that's used for the request that we're going to be using. And then dash C is for cookies, if we're going to be using any kind of cookies for simulating our authority uh, or authentication. So uh, no answer needed for the first part. Now let's run the actual command. So what is the directory that has an upload form page? I'm going to say it's upload just to just to guess, but let's actually run the command just so we can see. So it's going to be gobuster dir uhtp 10.10.136. Come on, buddy. 136 and 69, 9, 9 <laughs> on port 3333. 33. And it's going to be using the word list. I guess we're going to use the directory list. So user share uh, word lists, dir buster directory list 1.0.txt. That's going to be the one that we're going to use. And I think that's the full command. So let's run it and see what we find. We already found three images, CSS, JS, internal. That might be the one. And that is the one. So it's going to be forward slash internal forward slash. And there is our answer. Easy enough. Moving on. OK, so now that we found a form to upload files, we can leverage this to upload and execute our payload, which will lead to compromising the web server. So what common file file type you want to upload to exploit the server is blocked. Let's try a couple to find out. I want to say .php. It's, yeah, that's pretty common. Um, now, there's nothing on here that gives that away to us, unfortunately. But .php is a very, very common one, which is why it says which common file type do you want to use. So .php, so we're going to fuzz the upload form to identify which extensions are not blocked. To do this, we're going to use Burp Suite. If you need clarification on what Burp Suite is or how to set it up, please complete the Burp Suite module first, which we've already done. So I'm just going to kind of talk it out as I do it so you can see what's going on. And then we're going to use the intruder used for automating customized attacks. Uh, to begin, make a word list with the following extensions. And I'm going to create one real quick. And then now make sure Burp Suite is configured to intercept all the Burp browser traffic. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, upload a file once this request is captured. Send it to the intruder. Click on payloads and select the sniper attack type. Uh, click the positions tab now. Find the file name and add that to the extension. It should look like such and such. And I will see that in a little bit. Then run the attack. What extension is allowed? Now that we know what extensions we can use for our payload, we can progress. Uh, we're going to use a PHP reverse shell as our payload. A reverse shell works by calling on the remote host. Have I zoomed in completely or can I zoom out here? Let's try to see if I could do Okay, there you go. Easier that way. Uh, calling on the remote host and forcing this host to make a connection to you. So you listen for incoming connections, upload and execute your shell, which will beacon you out to control. Download the following reverse shell PHP here. Um, then to gain remote access to the machine, follow the steps, edit the file and edit the IP to be our IP address. You can get this by going to our IP in the browser. If you're try hack me connect the device, or we can just run ifconfig to try to find it. Uh, remember this file, uh, re rename this file to PHP reverse shell PHTML. This kind of gives away what I think the answer is going to be for what we're going to be able to run. Now we're going to listen to incoming connections using netcat following the netcat listen uh, command and then upload the shell and navigate to this internal uploads php reverse shell phtml this will execute the actual payload and we should have a reverse shell so that being said let us run the actual 
exercise just so we can kind of see how everything worked. All right, so I'm going to zoom in in our browser here just so we can kind of see a little bit better. And I'm going to try to do this uh, while it's still kind of part screen. I feel like I should actually do it in a full screen mode. So I'm just going to pop this out so we actually have a full screen mode here. So we can access the full thing and I'm just going to exit split view here. So this is, might be a little bit better and then we'll see if yeah we could still zoom in and out so that's good. Um, okay so first and foremost we need to open up Firefox uh, to use Burp Suite and to be able to send the traffic right so uh, it comes pre-installed again, and then there's a plugin that uh, it's called Foxy uh, uh, Foxy Proxy. There you go. So this is the plugin that when you add your Burp Suite uh, proxy to it, once you activate the Burp Suite proxy, everything gets sent through Burp Suite if intercept is on, right? So we're gonna turn this on because we want it to send everything to Burp Suite so that that actually works. If you don't do that part, it becomes kind of tr uh, troublesome to try to even run uh, Burp Suite. And now from here, Burp Suite. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. We're just gonna go temporary. You don't need to do most of these things. You don't have to do if you're just running a singular exercise. If you're gonna use Burp Suite all the time, especially in an enterprise situation, uh, you want to set those uh, those options up and actually assign parameters or use different folders or projects. Uh, just to kind of keep track of everything that's going on. Um, this is actually a really awesome tool, honestly. I think it's very, very cool. We're going to do this later. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to go to proxy. Uh, intercept is on, and you can see that it already caught some things for us. So I'm going to turn it off real quick, and I'm going to go to where we're supposed to go to to try and catch some traffic and see what's going on. Actually, no, you know what? The first thing I was supposed to do is I was supposed to create a quick little file that has those file extensions in it. So here we go. We're going to do nano uh, php extensions.txt. And in here, we're going to write dot php dot php3 dot uh, php4 dot php5 and dot phtml. <laughs> I think they already gave it away, honestly because it was a part of the, the other question, but so uh, cat php extension.txt. And there you go, there's our extensions. Okay, cool, so we created one. Uh, we're gonna use intruder to use for automating customized attacks and da 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 da. So we got that one. Uh, begin, create a word list with the following extensions. We did that. Uh, now make sure Brick Suite is configured to intercept all your browser traffic, which we had running already. Oh, I think it was already here. I didn't even have to search for it. Okay, cool. So there you go. And uh, it is designed to intercept everything. Um, upload a file to the upload uh, URL. And then once uh, this request is captured, send it to the intruder. Okay, so first and foremost, let's go and upload it to the upload URL upload URL is HTTP 10 10 136 69 port 33 33 internal that's the upload URL there we go okay so that's the upload URL so now what we need to do is we need to uh, upload something to that URL and right make sure purpose is compared to intercept traffic upload a file once the request is captured send it to the intruder okay cool so the way that this works is that you want to actually first do this part because as soon as you uh, do the uh, where is my it's in root php extensions open so now i have it attached first as soon as i click submit the browser is going to freeze. This is what Burp Suite does, especially when you turn on Intercept. So when you turn this on, the actual functionality of the website freezes and it doesn't load anything, but we'll see everything on 
the intercept right here, right? So just to give you an example, I'm going to do this and there's nothing in here. Then I'm going to go here and I'm going to click submit. And now we just got a little pop up in the corner. So when we go here, boom, the thing is over here and it's showing us that this is the content of the file that we just uploaded. And, you know, we click the submit form basic, right? This is basically, let me kind of zoom in a little bit so you could see. So um, this is the the host that we're trying to call on the on the ports that we're using. We're using Mozilla Firefox, some basics about what we're actually doing. And then this is the actual content that we're submitting. So we're submitting a form with a file attachment. The file name is PHP extension.txt. Inside the file is this content. And then we click submit and the submit file goes over here. So now what we need to do is we need to forward this thing by doing this and we're going to send it to intruder and when I do that intruder up here lights up and voila now we have intruder over here okay so far so good so this is the task so far so send it to the intruder click on payloads and select the sniper attack type so this is the thing click on payloads and the attack, I mean, the attack type is sniper already over here. You could do a bunch of different ones, but we're going to be using sniper because we want a directed specific attack. And then in our payload positions right here, it says add uh, a whatever that sign is. If you do auto, it kind of shows you where all the different places are that you could uh, add this little sign at this. I don't know what this is called. I guess it's a dollar sign. I'm not sure really, but this is the sign when you want to specifically add an area to uh, to use the sniper payload on, right? So you can clarify where you want it to be done. And so it says click the positions tab now um, and find the file name and add that sign to the extension of the file name. Okay, so basically, as as best as I'm understanding the instructions and trying to follow the instructions, uh, we're supposed to first figure out which one of these ends up being uh, the acceptable format that we're going to convert it to. Um, as the instructions kind of later on tell us, I know it's this, but I want to run the actual attack so that we can get it. But the instructions seem to be a little bit complete, and the attached video, the instructional video that comes with this thing, uh, is he's also skipping a lot of these things around. So what I want to do is I'm just going to run this attack based on what I know what to do. And then from here, we'll, we're going to see what we get from it. So essentially, when you attach these things here, when you attach these little things here, this is the portion of this entire code that we're going to attack later. Okay. And so when you have decided which portion that you're going to attack, uh, when you do auto right here, it tells you what portions are attackable. But we want to specifically attack this thing because we want to see what portion of this file is acceptable and what can be done, so on and so forth. So then you do this, click on payloads, and since it's a sniper attack, you do need to provide it some kind of a list. And so we can just do a simple list as our use. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can obviously do over here, but I'm just going to be doing a simple list. And then my list is going to be the one that I just created. So I'm just going to load PHP text, right? And I'm going to actually load that list. And this is what it shows us over here. So once this is ready, we just click start attack. And when you do that, it gives you a little bit of a pop up notification. You just click OK. And then it runs the attack for you, right? And so a status code of 200 means that it's successful. That means that all of these things can actually be uploaded, right? So these are all acceptable into the upload form. And there's no errors over here. And this is the basic bit length of what our upload file was. So that's basically it. So all of these are acceptable based on what it tells us because the status code is fine and there's no errors or timeouts, which is fine. So that's the thing. So we're going to do that and we're just going to discard it. And so if we go back to our question here, the question asks, what type of format can you accept? And our format is going to be dot uh, uh, PHTML. There you go. So now the second portion or the next portion of this is going to say that, okay, so now that you know what you're going to do, you're going to download the reverse shell script, which is available here. Oops. I don't want to do that. I want to go back. 
So it's going to be available here. And this is our reverse shell script. We could download it. Um, I think it already exists on the machine. So let me pull up terminal and see if we can find up, find it. PHP reverse shell dot PHP. Yeah, that does exist and it's inside the folder right here. So I don't need to re download this thing. So I'm just going to actually use this file right here. But what we are supposed to do with that file is uh, once you've downloaded it, edit the PHP reverse shell file and edit the IP address to the IP address of our machine. And we can do this by going here or just doing uh, IF config, which I'll get in a little bit, then rename the file to PHP uh, M P H T M L at the very end. So it's going to say reverse shell and it's going to say that. Now we're going to listen in to incoming connections using netcat running the following command and then go to the actual file because it's going to be uploaded in the uploads folder. And then we should see that we have a shell. And so if that is indeed the case, this whole thing should work. And then we should be able to get a flag that's probably on the desktop of the user. So all of that being said, let's run this whole thing and see if this indeed actually works. So first and foremost, we're going to do nano user share web shells PHP PHP reverse shell dot PHP. And so this is the actual file itself. And then we're going to go to the portion where we're supposed to find the IP address. So these are all comments, we're going to move that past the comments. And there we go. So this is put THM attach box IP address here. And so we could do it by doing the instructions that they gave us. And we'll just do both. So we'll run both instructions. And one of them says go to 10, 10, 10, 10. I think that's what it is. Right? Yeah, so go do this like that. And if I run this, oh, I still have this on. So I need to turn off the proxy. And it'll go here. And it says the try hack me IP is 10102933. Flag connection verified. Uh, I, don't, I wonder if this is the actual flag that we're supposed to use. I doubt it because this is, I, I don't think it is, but I'm just going to try it. It's, fr it's probably from like another exercise that we're supposed to run. No, that's not it. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, but okay, so this seems to be our IP over here. So I'm just going to double check through IF config as well and see if that's the actual IP address that shows up. So I have config on all Linux, Unix, and uh, other type machines, brings all the IP addresses of the actual machine and everything else that's here. And so I think, which one is it? Uh, which one are we supposed to be looking for? Of the Tune Zero IP. Oh, you know what? It's not even there. It didn't show up here. So it's not here. I have config does not show it. Mm -mm. So what if I do if and then we actually search it. So if we do if config grep tune zero. Yeah, nothing comes up. Okay, fine. It's not there. Fair enough. All right, so we're going to change the IP address to this IP right here 10102933. I'm going to copy see if I can actually paste it inside this thing right here. Um, it is dark in my house in my room right now and so I can't see my keyboard so I gotta take the time <laughs> and so there we go so from there now we're just gonna uh, actually go into this whoops into this section and paste it right in front of this and that should be fine oh gosh okay so maybe not delete that go back and do uh, Quote. There you go. So that's fine. Okay, so that's the IP address inside our PHP reverse shell. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this and exit out of it. And so that's our PHP dash reverse shell uh, file that we're going to upload now, uh, but we want to rename it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, user share web shells. 
PHP PHP reverse shell dot PHP and I'm gonna copy it to PHP reverse shell dot PHTML right and that should land in the current directory that we're in and there you go so we just copied it and it's in our root directory now so if I go back to here and if I do browse that's where it is and we're going to attach that then we're gonna go back to burp suite and let's just make sure that this is actually indeed the case I don't think I even need to capture that anymore because I think after finding out the basics that we found out from uh, the file extension that's the only thing that we need burp suite for I think yeah the only thing that we need to do now is just run the netcat listener and then go to the place that has the file uploaded and then we should see our our flag so that is indeed the case so I don't even need burp suite anymore so we're just gonna submit it should it says success right so that's been uploaded so now I can just go from internal I'm gonna go to uploads and I'm going to oh let me make sure that I actually have a reverse shell listening so that we could do the reverse shell nancat lv and p and that was the basic port that was listed inside that shell file that we just saw so netcat lvnp and now we're listening on that port and now if i just go here now and go to the php reverse shell dot html press enter and it's going to run and in here we should see there we go we got it if this little dollar sign implies that we're already in and well actually right here it just says connection received from such and such and such and such and so if we do a basic ls command holy moly look at all these things that are here so what we need to do is we need to go to the where is it it says what is the user flag what is the name of the user who manages the server so first let's do who am i it says www dash data that can't be the actual thing because it's supposed to be a four digit thing so host name Vuln University that can't be the actual user either um, so we're trying to find the person who manages the web server so what is the name of the person who manages the web server that's what we're trying to find here okay so uh, after reviewing the video and the rest of the instructions this actually is correct that it's not supposed to be this because as we see from our uh, answer this is kind of a hint right the answer is giving us is that it's supposed to be a four digit uh, response that's what we're supposed to find and www dot uh, that data this thing right here you can also see it over here that is clearly not a four uh, four character response so a way that we can work around this to try to find who this actual person is I can go to home and do ls and there's a username there so we just went to the home directory and inside the home directory there is a character named Bill and so is that the actual username that is indeed the username so we got that so very good so now what is the user's flag so let's just go back inside our little file right here and so let's go to Bill's folder and if we do ls uh, let me see if I can do ls la there you go perfect so now you can kind of see all the stuff that's in here and there's a text file called user.txt so now I'm just going to do user.txt cat and there's the flag so that's the flag so the instructions for this are kind of funky a little bit but that's why we make videos like this just in case other people run through the same problems that I run through and you're trying to find these things so there you go boom and we got that excellent all right I'm very happy about that okay great so now that you have compromised this machine we will escalate our privileges and become the super user which is root in Linux SUID uh, set and we did this in the previous video so I'm not even gonna read through read through all this so you should already know what SUID is in case you don't know SUID is for super user so anytime that there's an S in front of it it's a super user 
And what it allows the the permissions on that thing to do if you have SUID permission is that you can essentially run it as root and there's a lot of uh, vulnerabilities and exploits that if you find a file that you can run as root then it allows you to get a root shell and all of this was done by the way in a previous uh, room and a previous video in this whole module so this is kind of part of the same uh, path that we're on right now so um, in Linux, uh, the SUID set user, uh, and I'm to kind of make this a little bit easier to read, I'm just going to close this one out and I'm going to open the show split view so it condenses the left part of the screen for us and we can zoom in and see this easier. So SUID set owner user ID upon execution is a particular type of uh, permission given to a file. SUID gives temporary permissions to a user to run the program or the file with the permission of the file owner, which if it's root, then you also get the, the root permission. So set user ID upon execution. I guess that's what technically is supposed to stand for. For example, the binary file to change your password has the SUID bit set on it. So this is the binary file that changes passwords. Uh, this is because to change your password, it will need to write the shadowers uh, write to the shadowers file that you do not have access to it root does so it has root privileges to make it to make the right changes and so read write execute are the stuff and so read write s would be for the super so on the system search for all your suid files which file stands out so let's see if we could do that okay so again our video as well as the instructions kind of fail us so to be able to find the files that has all SUID, we need to run this command, which is find uh, perm for permission 4000, which is the permission for SUID. And it's going to be a type F. And just to kind of make sure that uh, we don't see all of these other error messages, because I ran it and there's a bunch of results that came. And I want to be able to easily sort through all of our results without having to deal with uh, a lot of searching right so there is a very simple way to do that and that is to uh, dev null that should be it and we will see if this is going to work so but that's the full uh, command right so find inside root that's what that means so find inside the root file or everything within those file uh, directories within that file as well everything that has a permission of 4000 and we were looking for a type of file and then to do, uh, two uh, for you know two greater than dev null means that basically send all of the error messages away and just show me all the successful ones. And there you go. So everything that was an error message previously is no longer here, and we only get to see the files that are accessible. And so from this list of files, there needs to be something that stands out to us and let's see it is probably so forward slash three characters forward slash a few characters so we're looking for none of these because there is several forward slashes in it so it's some of these and from this um i would say maybe f user mount that seems interesting system control seems interesting um yeah those are really the only ones that kind of u mount maybe but i think it's either f user mount or system control so let's see so let's zoom out a little bit. So if we do bin f user amount, nope, that's not it. So bin system control, that's the one. All right, so it's challenge time. We've guided you through this so far. Can you exploit this system further to escalate your privileges and get the final answer? Become root and get the last flag on the root uh, folder root.txt. So bin system CTL is the thing that we're trying to exploit. So let's see what we can find from a little bit of research. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do, <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked by how uh, unhelpful the instructions have been so far, and I'm really glad that I'm making uh, this uh, video for you guys. So this might be challenging, but I mean, if you're gonna be a hacker, you have to get good at research and all that stuff. So. Uh, this is kind of part of the process, right? So, that, and you watching this video is a part of you doing research 
and maybe you're actually having problems with this particular room that's why you're trying to do this and I think they designed some of these rooms literally for the purpose that you can kind of get good at flexing your research muscle and all that stuff so uh, this is what we're gonna do so first and foremost this is the one that I, we know that we're gonna be using so let's see if we can see what the permissions of that are. So LSL um, system CTL. And so it says read, write, set UID. So S is over there. And the creator of the file is root. So we can only execute this thing. And uh, the group can execute and write on it, so on and so forth. So but what's important to us is that this is actually set to it. So that means that this is something that we can uh, use to get uh, root permissions right so there's a website called GTFO bins that I like calling get the fuck out bins and so on here all of these things are listed as having vulnerabilities to be able to run and kind of mess with so system CTL is the one that we're looking for and it does exist on here and it has SUID and pseudo functions available with it so SUID is the one that we're looking for and so this is the command essentially that we really need to run. Um, so if the binary that has the SUID bit set, it does not drop the elevator privileges and it may be abused to access the file system. This example creates a local SUID copy of the binary and runs it to maintain uh, elevator privileges. To interact with an S existing SUID binary, skip the first command and run the program using its original path. So uh, to interact with this, existing SUID binary skip the first command which is sudo install m access which system ctl and run the program using its original path which might be this thing alright so let's just try it we're gonna try a couple of different variations of this first I'm just gonna copy paste this whole thing and see if this actually works so we're gonna paste it do we get root we did not get root. Let me try again. Yeah, I'm still this person. All right, so here's what I have learned, that we're going to run everything as one command at a time and see if uh, this actually ends up working for us uh, one by one. Uh, or we're going to run, I guess, several, several... Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you. So first, we're going to create a variable called... Um, make temp dot service that's the first thing we're gonna do and that was done perfectly fine and then what we're gonna do is we're going to take the next several lines which goes from here to here and it's gonna run these all together and this is pretty complicated stuff even for me and so that, let's see, that seems to have been fine. We're just going to press enter just to make sure that that completed as well. And then, so let's see if we could just run systemctl link this. Okay, that worked and system ctl enable now the variable that seems to have worked as well so it seems that these things actually did work so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to run with privileged permissions and nope we're still <laughs> we're still <laughs> this person Okay, so it seems to be that we're not even supposed to get uh, why is this? All right, so that we're already in the bash file. Uh, I don't think we're even supposed to get root privileges. This is all very, very interesting. Um, but we're supposed to read the stuff that's inside this file. So let's see if we can even find CD temp folder ls and there is something called output inside this folder so if I read cat output and it will give me all of that stuff so it transferred the UID to it okay I see 
So instead of doing that, so that's basically exactly what uh, this line actually runs. So it just transfers the ID to temp output. So instead of doing that, what we want is for it to actually read our roots flag in there, right? So uh, what we want to do, so we could do a couple of things. This command that's going to be running for us, instead of it just reading this into the output file, we can have it do any kind of command that we want for us. And so we can either have it read uh, the root file for us and put it into the output file, or we can give it permission for bash for us so that we can actually become root. Either way, we will be able to get the answer to the flag. So I'm going to try both. So first I'm going to, first and foremost, I'm going to try to change this so that it all, it, it, what it does for me is it reads the uh, text file for me that's inside the root folder and then put it into output and I'll do output one. Okay, so this is the one that I'm going to try right now. So first and foremost, we're going to run this command one more time. Or let me see if I could do back exit. Okay, there you go. We're just going to start from the beginning again. And so we're going to paste the command, press enter, that variable is going to be created, the variable tf is going to be created for us. And then from there, we're going to take the next portion of this, which is all the way up to this portion. That's going to, it's going to echo the service that we just created, and it's going to type one shot, execute, start this thing, and then run that for us. So we're going to run that real quick, paste that, press enter, and that's been done. And so it should have read this, and it should already be inside the output file, or by the end of this whole thing, it should be inside the output file. So then what we're going to do is we're going to run the next couple of portions of this to actually make sure that this finishes. So it's going to be system CTL link the new variable that we just made. Very good. System CTL enable right now this variable that we just made. Okay, very good. And so now if I just go to temp output one, there's the flag. So it actually did read the flag for us and this should be the answer. Let's copy that. Submit that. Okay, very good. It actually worked. And I just want to make sure that I post this on here for now. But um, I want to try the next version of this too, where we actually get root shell because I do want to get root because we're still uh, WW data, this person. So I want to run the next version of this where we actually create a root shell for ourselves um, and we're able to execute root. So instead of this command that we are reading the temp output file, what we're going to do is we're going to do a change permissions command to the actual bin uh, shell file, the actual shell command or bash command, excuse me. So we're going to do chmods for change the permissions uh, plus s for super user or set uid i keep calling it super user uh, bin bash and then so now we're going to try this portion right just to see if this is actually going to work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try it all over again i'm going to copy this go here i'm going to paste this press enter the variable has been created then i'm going to go from this portion and i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it here and that portion should be done. Then we're going to do the following commands. System CTL link this variable. That should be done. System CTL enable right now this variable. And that should be done as well. And hopefully we can then run bash as a privileged user and see if it worked. It did work. So there you go. So that works as well. So now we can go to the root folder ls. We can find the root text and re read the root text file, which is the flag. So 
we had a couple of ways to get this done this was quite interesting in my <laughs> humble opinion this was one of the rooms where because of the fact that it was kind of the this is the last room so uh, vulnerability university or vulner vulnerability whatever this is called uh, it's a part of uh, this room so I'm going to show you the full thing right so and we've skipped through some of this stuff but there is a lot of stuff that I did uh, record that you guys uh, should already have access to on this channel right so um, none of these things I recorded the Linux fundamentals I didn't record I think we started recording from uh, network services this is around the time that we started recording and then web hacking fundamentals I did not record burp suite was in there and we did a little bit of a covering of that but so what my point is is that this whole thing what we're in on is right here at the very end right here we're here already so this is the end of this entire pathway which means that they're assuming that we can use all of the skills that we've learned in these paths to complete this path and one of the big skills is research to try to be able to kind of pull everything off but they left out a lot of the spoon feeding stuff like in these rooms right here because they're more of the intro rooms they spoon feed everything to you including the commands and everything else that we were doing so I think it was a cryptography so inside this room right here they spoon feed literally everything to you and they tell you command by command what to type and what to use and so it's natural that when you get to the end of it they wouldn't spoon feed everything to you it's natural that by the end of it they expect you to kind of know what's going on and for you to try to figure everything out on your own so if this felt like this was over your head what I recommend for you to do is go to the beginning and learn all of that stuff if you don't already have try hack me get yourself a membership use the link in the discount uh, below in the description so that you can actually get that discount and it becomes even easier and more affordable and this is already super cheap I think it's like 12 bucks or something like that to get try hack me so you can get super cheap access to it including the link that's uh, in the description and then go through all the basics and then these videos can also help you along your path and then by the time that you get to the end of it you're a little bit more uh, capable <laughs> so that so that it doesn't feel like you're jumping into the deep end especially if you know this is your first video that you're watching and you haven't done any of this other stuff then of course it doesn't make sense to try to do all that so uh, that's it. This is the Vaughn University uh, module that we just did for the um, for the basic computer exploitation uh, module in the complete beginner's path. And I thought that this was going to be a quick one, but it ended up not being so quick. So I'm just going to do a completely separate video for the next few modules, and then yeah, we'll, I'll just see you in the next one. So. This is your boy try hack me. <laughs> this is your boy try hack me. This is your boy Hank Hackerson <laughs> using try hack me. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, turn on the notification bell so that you get the next video when it comes out. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this useful and you actually learned something. So I'm excited that we were able to pull this whole thing off and actually do both of them. Have the command right here actually do the reading of the root file for us as well as get access to uh, the the root uh, privilege by running that command as well so cool i'll see you in the next one